On to the UK now. The government there has announced plans, or rather the outline of plans, to seek a temporary transitional customs union as plans to exit the European Union do get underway. Now, the announcement on Tuesday came as the government prepared to publish more detailed proposals on its future partnership with the European Union. Sometimes it's very difficult to deal with the immediate issues, take the Northern Irish border, um, uh, without having an idea of what the long-term customs are. You know, if you don't know the customs arrangements, how do you decide on how you make an invisible border between Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland? So you know, we're not trying to force anything, but we are putting our view of what the long-term position will look like. All right, then let's dig deep into the details of what Brexit will look like come March 2019. Richard Bestick is live in London. He's got more data um, on this particular story. So, Richard, walk us through the outline of the, the transitional customs union that's being proposed by the UK. How exactly would it work? Well, Rama, Britain is planning to ask the EU for a temporary customs union to bridge the gap immediately after the UK leaves the union in March 2019, before then moving on to something more permanent. The aim, to avoid the customs chaos that would follow if trading arrangements uh, weren't in place by running this transitional scheme, while at the same time remaining free, in the words of the Brexit Minister Davis, David Davis that you heard just now, uh, to negotiate what he called uh, bold new trade relationships around the world. It's part of a new position paper uh, to be published tomorrow uh, ahead of next round of talks with the EU at the end of the month. The government in London envisages that the temporary customs union might last possibly five years, but first Rama, they'll need to get the agreement of the other 27 member states, and that could be a lot easier said than done. Indeed. Um, based, based on the proposals that I did see a little earlier, it seems like the UK wants to be able to negotiate trade deals with other countries at the same time as it's negotiating the exit. But legally, since it's still a member of the European Union until March 2019, that can't happen. So why is the UK making proposals which seem at face value to be dead on arrival? David Davis gets around that by saying they'd negotiate the trade deals with the rest of the world but not activate them until Britain was able to stand on its own feet in a post-Brexit world. He's also admitting uh, that the UK would continue paying into the EU in the short term, although he's quite coy about how he phrases that, as uh, there is the risk of a uh, backlash from hardline Brexiteers. Have a listen to how he phrases it, Rama. Well, it's not a question of payment. They are actually uh, selling us 290 billion. They're selling us 290 billion, we're selling them 230 billion a year. It's in their interest. I mean, BMW do not want to have to have a customs border that uh, is going to slow down their sales or add administrative costs. Uh, Siemens is not going to want to do that, you know. So, uh, and, the, and the port of Rotterdam is going to want to have an efficient operation, the biggest port in Europe, is going to want to have an efficient operation. So they've got an interest as well as us. Right then, so we've been hearing there from uh, the Brexit Secretary, David Davis. But Richard, when should we expect a, a formal response to this transitional proposal uh, from the EU's representatives? Well, there's no formal response yet, Rama, but there is an awful lot of background chatter and early indications aren't good, apart from saying other issues have to be agreed before the two sides can talk about trade, primarily the size of the divorce bill uh, and the Irish border, uh, leading EU officials have dismissed hopes of what David Davis calls a, a streamlined customs check as a fantasy of invisible borders. The First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, is even more blunt, saying the UK proposals are daft. And of course then, who oversees all this? Well, the EU would have the uh, ECJ, the European Court of Justice. David Davis has already ruled that out. So even the UK government admits its hopes for this uh, customs partnership with the EU is untested and innovative. Indeed, we'll have to see how this plays out. It's only live in interesting times. That's, uh, of course, Richard Bestick there live in London.